What's up, everybody? Yeah, come on in. What's up, damn time? Come on in. We're going to give him another minute, y'all. We're going to get started. Ten times the dark plasma clouds talking the natural clouds combining in your area. It's hard to say. Shit, they always cloak in my area, so I really ain't paid attention. What's up, Chris? What's up, Michelle? What's up, third son? All right. How about we go and get started? How about we go and get started? I just finished recently watching the TV show Cloak and Dagger, you know, on Hulu, which was really, really good, actually. Really, really, really good. So... Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. You got two characters, Tyrone Johnson and Tandy Bowens, um, who come from two different aspects of the family, right? Two big, two side, two different sides of the track. At first, uh, started off, you know, the storyline for the TV show. In a way, we gonna focus mainly on the TV show, not the comics. 
the storyline starts off that they were driving home. Uh, for Tandy, she was driving with her daddy, came to pick her up. She was a ballerina, and a rig exploded, and he he and it threw a truck off, and he stopped, and the daddy dodged the truck, dodged it, and the car went into the water, and they uh, he drowned. Then you had um, on the other end, who whose storyline was going on? You had uh, Tyrone Johnson. Tyrone Johnson, he. Uh, uh, he was hanging out with his brother, and uh, his brother was part of a gang, and he thought that he was gonna steal something, but he, uh, he, his little brother Tyrone misinterpreted because his brother name was Bobby. His little brother Tyrone misinterpreted it and stole the radio because they was radio thieves at the time. And uh, when he stole the radio, his brother was about to go take it back when he found out about it, and the police came after him. Uh, the rig exploded again. They chased them. The rig exploded again. Uh, during the same time period, and they made and the uh, cop Connors mistakenly shot by being killed. Him. And so, or well, so-called mistakenly shot him. Well, mistake he did mistakenly shoot him, but uh, the problem was he didn't answer for his crimes. He just continued. Uh, he called in some favors to get off, and he ran for the most part, right? So, yeah, this was going on. And so what happened was Tyrone jumped in the water after Bobby and tried to save him, but he couldn't. But then he he ended up saving Tandy from the water, and uh, they ended up on the shore. You see what I'm saying? The shore, the beach of New Orleans. They was in New Orleans. So, uh, yeah, and this is pretty much where the story began. The explosion was dark and light energy. You see what I'm saying? Melanin and... Uh, and uh, the light energy, the dark energy is melanin. The light energy is bioincandescence, or it just simply incandescence, for this case. You know the yin and yang forces of the world, right? So uh, each each uh, group, each 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 of the duo absorbs one aspect or one polarity. You know, and interestingly enough, their personalities are completely opposite of their abilities. Like say, for example, Tandy Bowens. Uh, her, she was rash, uh, you know, she was tactical, cause, uh, she spent the next eight years living on her own for the most part, cause her mom was pretty much fucked up, and, the, uh, this company called Roxxon, they took everything from them, so, uh, she spent the next eight years just struggling, she was homeless, and so she did pretty much whatever it took to survive, whereas, uh, Tyrone, on the other hand, he spent this eight years trying to do everything right and proper due to the fact that uh, just to stay out of the line of fire of the uh, the government, you see what I'm saying, the, the police force, you know, the police force. So, you know, so, so, so this is what you got going on. Now, this is where it gets good. This is where, this is where it gets good. <clears throat> well, what's happening now is... Is eight years later, he you know he real pro he, he real popular. Go to a Christian school, uh, doing his thing, right? You know, popular basketball player. So they live in two completely different lives. He came up, uh, and she fell off. But it started off, she was on top. You know, as far as society is concerned, she was on top uh, before her daddy died. But then they fell off. He he was on the bottom before the rig explosion and he came up. You see what I'm saying? So you see you see this dad this interplay of yin and yang. You see what I'm saying? This, this interplay of yin and yang here. You seeing this a lot uh in this storyline. So uh, Tyrone's personality is opposite of his ability. He cool, honorable, courageous, willful, um, you know, and 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 he pretty much braves. You know, he brave. So it's the opposite of dark energy, you know, which is usually aggressive, um, you know, um, it, it, it's usually fierce, ferocious, you know, so, so, so it balanced out his honorable character, whereas, um, um, uh, Tandy, you know, since she was a survivalist at this point, she did whatever it took to survive, so that, that, that was kind of balanced the light, you see what I'm saying, she needed some light. You know, she needed light, and he, um, so, 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 her, uh, to balance out her survivalist skills. This is what you got going on. What's up, Dolph? What's up, RJ? To balance out her survivalist skills. So, now, this wig is good. Um, 
when they get their abilities, you know, events start to happen in time, serial events start to happen, you know, how the force goes, the force begins to put things in motion when big events are about to go down, when it was a uh, event, big events about to go go down, cause um, a, a third member who uh, was of the group, it was, it was four major people in the group, um, you had Bridget, who was a police officer, and then you had um, Eva Lita. Yeah, I hope I'm saying the right, name right. Eva Lita. Eva Lita was a was a um, she pretty much was a also cheerleader in school, but her family was uh, master Vodun practitioners. She come from a long lineage of Vodun priestess. See you know what I'm saying? So um, you know that that Vodun is a heavy. Heavy, heavy influence in this movie. And you know what were some of the things that Vodun uh, portrays in this particular show? You know, uh, you know. So, so, so we we gonna talk about. Um, I'm gonna show y'all some images real quick of uh. Let me see here. Show y'all some images real quick. This Cloak and Dagger TV show, if you ain't never seen it. Let's see. You go tie and him harnessing his melanin, dark energy. It's based off of Marvel Comics, right away. Marvel Comic Book. Here you go, uh. It's kind of bright there. Here you go, here you go, here you go Tandy. Harness and light, energy. No, I'm gonna stop. It's on Hulu. Yep, yeah, it's on Hulu. This them harnessing. We're gonna get into them being a divine parents in a little bit. So yeah. Now let's get that. That that's both you seeing the yin and the yang energies. But we'll we'll get into what this scene actually represent later. Now. Now. Uh, as they going along, they, of course, the force brings them back together. You know, it's an interplay of push and pull. Uh, um, uh, you know, push, pulling and pushing. You know, when we're dealing with balance, um, you know, breaking apart, coming back together. You know, hot, cold, the usual, the usual um, aspects. You know, dark, the interplay between dark and light, that dance of balance. You know, that dance of balance here. So, so this, this this story is pretty much a yin yang story, yin yang magic, for the most part. And so, uh, they come across each other in the storyline uh, again after like eight years of not seeing each other on that beach. And Tandy uh, actually robs uh, Tyrone. And Tyrone finds out and gives chase to her, and then they actually, he he grabs her and touches her hand, and the energy, the 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 imbalanced energy actually explodes and knocks knocks both of them back. What's up, go? Actually explodes and knocks both of them back, right? So uh, that's when they find out that they both have abilities. You know, they both have abilities, and now they start getting to the story of what was going on on their read. You see what I'm saying? Uh, they was trying to harness. The yin and yang forces of the planet, and uh, uh, you know, for for power purposes, the dude, the dude on Rock Sun was trying to harness this and uh, caused the rig to explode, right? So, well, what what did what the rig gave birth to was the divine parent, you know, the divine parent. The divine parents is a New Orleans teaching that uh, every 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 generation there's two people. Uh, that that that's chosen to protect the city as it's in uh, full out all out danger. You see what I'm saying? So uh, and, and Tyrone and Tandy 
is chosen for this. You know, they both both their names is uh, T's. You know, T's. You know, start with T's. I found that interesting too. Tyrone Tandy. Two T's. What are T's? T cells. Are they T? They they represent the T cells in your immune system. You know, you know, uh, one of the aspects in your immune immune system. So they really represent the protectors. You know, they they really represent this energy by uh, on a biological, spiritual, soulful level, also and mental. So now, what's going on? What's going on? Um, you got these events happening. They're awakening their abilities. They are. Uh, they tapping in. Tanda begins to manifest light, and she's able to summon daggers uh, and balls of light. You know, uh, uh, sort of like flash, and she can shoot them with, like flash bang grenades and fuck people up. He can teleport. Tyrone can teleport. Uh, he can open up black holes within himself. And another peculiar thing they can do: uh, Tyrone can touch people and see their fears. Tanda can touch people and see their hopes. You know. Showing the parallel, their abilities are parallel what their personalities are. So, so, so it's a balance there. The whole show is about balance and, and stability. You know, them them finding stability within with, with each other, and finding balance in, in uh, within themselves as well. Most importantly, so um, uh, they start tapping to their abilities, do new things. Um, Ty's girlfriend, you know, he was he was struggling in the movie. Um, you know, he was struggling in the movie. So Ty's girlfriend, uh, Eva Lita, or I'm hoping I'm saying the name right, Eva Lita, uh, introduces him to Vodun. Uh, his her mother, which I think is Leticia, if I'm not mistaken. Her mother, uh, uh, you know, uh, her, her mother is actually uh, not her mother, her auntie, her auntie. Her auntie is pretty much the oracle, the Sophian archetype in this movie. You know, the Sophian archetype. You know, the oracle. You know, teaching uh, the those old time traditions to, to to people on many different levels. You see what I'm saying? So uh, she she teaches. He, he uh, Tyrone is struggling, going through some shit. He she teaches him about having spiritual baths, and she teaches him about. Um, uh, Tapping into Papalea Bar, guardian of the crossroads, right? The the lower, you know, they use they use the Haitian terminology mainly versus the African terminology. Who Papalea Bar would be in Orisha? You see, what I'm saying the guardian of the uh, uh, crossroads, you know. Uh, so 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 a crossroad. The crossroad is the in between dimension between our physical realm and the spiritual realm, right? So you you gonna come across this a lot in uh, Vodun and Hoodoo practices. They're gonna talk to you about the crossroads. Crossroads, uh, in a physical, can represent if you if you fucking with the Gidi real hard, it'll be a graveyard outside out of entrance to the graveyard. Uh, in the real world, it literally will be a crossroads, a four way lane. You see what I'm saying? It could be an actual lane that's called a crossroads, or you can modify it for it to be a four way street. You know, like say for example, your road, you like right next door to my house is technically a crossroads. If I was to go outside and draw the what they call the vive, which is the magical symbol for um um Papa Led Bar. Let me show you what I'm talking about by Vive. That's V E V E. Let me see here, page thirty. Where's the Vive? Uh Vive. Each spirit has its own oh yeah, I'm reading from the book Voodoo by Leo Gordon. Leo Gordon, charms and rituals to empower your life. So the Book of Voodoo, and it just gives you the basic information on Voodoo, Haitian Voodoo, or Haitian Vodun, you know, or Vodou, or Vodou, you know, V O D O U. So, so uh, Vive, Vive. Each spirit has its own symbolic drawing. A Vive, which is traced on the ground during the ceremony using cornmeal, wood ash, powder, red brick, or sometimes even gunpowder. The powder is held a, uh, in a half talibot shell and trickle from the fingers to produce the thin lines of the elaborate design. The process is very skillful as the patterns created are geometrically complex and intricate. The drawing of the vivet is an arresting and theatrical aspect of any voodoo ceremony. 
Some of they are drawn singly for an individual spirit, while others may be interlinked, spanning the length of the temple and honoring a host of spirits. Once the vevey has been traced, it is sprinkled with libations or of rum, and small offerings of food are laid upon it. Now, if it's gunpowder, they can, if it's gunpowder, which is a flammable object, they can set it on fire as well for more for more of an intense energy. See what I'm saying? Uh, once the vevey has been traced, it is sprinkled with libations. Or, like I said, I said read that the priest and priestess then shakes the a sun, the sacred rattle over the vevey, muttering prayers and places it, uh, a lit candle uh, in the center. The purpose of the the purpose of the vevey is to summon and focus the law, the lower. My bad, the lower. The lower are the Orishan spirits. You see what I'm saying? I know y'all mostly know them as the Orishan, or Orisha, the Yoruba, the Ifa. Uh, paradigm, but in uh, Haiti they call it Lua, and in New Orleans, go do they usually use the term Lua. You see what I'm saying? So, 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 yeah. Uh, the Vive, let's see, while music and dance charm, and, uh, and while mu music and dance charm and attract uh, attract the Lua, the Vive perform more potent magic and oblige the spirits to manifest themselves. They are an irresistible magnet for divine attention. Which means they love to be, uh, they love to be on the scene. You see what I'm saying? They love to be, you know, they they love their energy of being on the scene or being seen. That's why a lot of um, deities show up in movies because they love the energy of being seen. You know, they they love their cosmic interplay, their cosmic show. You know, that 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 show that 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 uh, which are which literally movies are what seen. So so so. You seeing this uh, play out? They love celebrations. They love to party. They love to have fun. They love to be the center of attention, right? And it is, you know, anybody, you know, anybody with a soul, with 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 feelings and emotions, like to be the center of attention. Sometimes, or like to tap in. Uh so 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 yeah. Santiago, huh? This nigga agent. Hold on, let me delete him first. Let me block him, and then I will delete the comment. There we go. They pop up from time to time. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, they are irresistible magnet for divine attention. So, what was that? Uh, they are, they love to be the center of attention. So, movies are literally the modern day mythology for us, for the most part. We literally go watch movies to get a taste of hour and 30 minute mythology installed into our subconscious. No lie. See what I'm saying? We, we, we literally... We literally go to the movies to get mythologies and stars into our, our subconscious. Because uh, I tell y'all all the time, movies are what? Visual grimoires, TV shows, visual grimoires, anime, cartoons, visual grimoires. All this visual grimoires. What you know is media or medium is, a, is, is, is literally a connection between the spiritual and physical plane via what? Mythology. Uh, via what? Mythology. What is, uh, what is mythology? Mythology is chaos science or chaos teaching or melanin teachings. You see what I'm saying? That, 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 it, that ignites the imagination and allows you to, uh, allows you to project your consciousness from just, from not, uh, it actually frees your consciousness and allows you to project it from not only this being bound to this realm, but allows you to travel into all other realms like the lower dimensions or, uh, and, and, and ancient Egyptians and everybody else who are about this, you know, about this uh, energy. You can travel to multiple planes of existence because you begin to find out then that you are a multidimensional being. So that's what these Vivey are about. They are irresistible magnet for divine attention, like I just said. The Vivey have diverse cultural roots spanning the passage from Africa to Haiti. Primar primarily, they originate from the animistic religious practices of the home -made. But the patterns have been influenced by French filigree, ironwork designs, as well as the symbols of the indigenous Taino Indians of Haiti. They are also vestiges of Freemasonry in the symbols depicted on the Vevey and Vodou flags, including stars, a builder's compass, pick, spades, and coffins. So that's what the Vevey are. I'm about to show you some pictures of them. Hold on. Each spirit Vivei, the Vivei. Each spirit has its own symbolic drawing called the Vivei. The Vivei are drawings during the ceremonies to coax the spirits from their divine homeland to the mortal world. So they tell you each spirit or each soul or each deity, deity has its own dimension, own personal dimension that you can summon from their dimension 
uh, with these sigils uh, and various other things to get them here. So this is what they look like. Here we go, pop a lid bar right here. Here we go, uh, Urzuli Frida here. Here we go, uh, Azuli Danta here. You know, and actually in Haitian Vodun, this is a requirement. You have to learn how to draw these, you know, which is actually very useful because you can do, uh, you can do amazing things, you know, uh, by tapping in. And then you can give them offerings along with the symbols and, and various other things. But this, this when they, when they talk about Vave, this is what they talking about right here. These are the Vave, magical symbols, and each uh, each lore has their own magical symbol that you can uh, draw and 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 and, and, and spit on and uh, for libations and set on fire and all type of cool things to summon them to this realm. Then you give them your offerings of whatever you going uh, whatever they like, you know. So yeah, that's what that's what a Vave is. So yeah, we're gonna get into a lot of cool concepts that they introduce to you. If you didn't know, if you don't know much about, um, um, we gonna we gonna we gonna skip around. We gonna come back to it. So yeah, another thing they introduced is when they was doing the divine parents, they had voodoo dolls. You know, we have a lot of people asking about them voodoo dolls, like or voodoo dolls, as they call them. So what are the voodoo dolls? Well, they talking about them here. They talking about them here. Voodoo dolls. Dolls are placed on altars, but they are never malevolently pierced with pins, as in the common perception of voodoo in movies. Black girl dolls and fancy dresses are often used to represent and honor Azili Dantor, which is the warrior mother. Some voodoo dolls are elaborate creations. Uh, Piero Barra, a voodoo priest and artist, created exquisite dolls as a way of paying homage to his beloved Lua. Discovered by ethno uh, ethnologists, these surreal and fantastic dolls have rapidly journeyed from the altar to the art gallery. Small hand small hands on cloth, cloth dolls called messenger dolls are used to transport covert messages to the spirit world by binding to the doll a scrap of paper on which the message is written. The dolls are then left at the cro at a crossroads or cemetery, which are considered to be gateways between the mortal and divine worlds where they can transport the messages to the spirits. So 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 they look like this. There's one. Uh they don't have any pictures of the dolls, but you know, I'll just show you an example here. There's one right there. So and, and the reason why I'm telling you about the dolls because they actually portrayed them in the movies. And so this is why they portrayed them. She actually had them on uh she had them on a shelf, which was another version of the altar. And they were all a divine parent. Then we got another one here. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, the divine parent. I don't know. Vodun must be a trigger trigger word or something. I don't know. Now they don't use to pop up like this. But anyway, uh these dolls actually uh, anchors between this ram and the next. Um, um, anchors between this ram and the next. And this one was in, this one is in a bottle. How about this? You know, you know, this one is in the bottle. You know, so uh, you know, you, you got these, you got these, and they they are used for specific purposes, not to stick pins in them. Although that actually is a skill now. You know, uh, this is the Haitian Vodou, but in New Orleans Vodou, they will fuck you up with some Vodou dolls, actually. <laughs> in Vodou, they actually have learned how to use them as a weapon. And they, they, they used to take down a lot of oppressors or slave masters with Vodou dolls. And a lot of people, they just did not like and fucking them up. So, in, in Haitian Vodou, they don't use them like that, for real. But in New Orleans Vodou, Oh, they fuck you up. Since how the TV show is about New Orleans, you know, um, uh, we 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 gonna be we gonna be uh, switching between the two, and so you know, um, you, you got a lot going on. Here. You got a lot going on. So it's a powerful, powerful science, magical science here. You know, uh, I told y'all, I told y'all about Voodotronics, the magical technologies. You know, uh, in, in in one of my lectures, Voodoo Magic lecture, where we go over this. 
So, okay, here goes some pictures of the, some more of the dolls, you know. You know, bottles and dolls and everything. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. This is what you got going on. Here. This is what you got going on. Let's see. Let's continue here. Let's continue. So in the show, they continue. They 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 start to portray very well, uh, real true, uh, real true aspects of Odin. You know, uh, and so. Our boy Tyrone has to learn Vodun to, 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 to balance himself out because he was lost and didn't know what to do and Christianity wasn't working. Oh, I love how they portrayed. He was a, he was Catholic Christianity too, so that was true, so-called true Christianity, right? So that shit wasn't working. So my boy went to uh, see uh, his girls, took him to go see her auntie, the Oracle, and the Oracle put him on gang like, now our spirits are the Lord. She made that, she made that uh, perfectly clear to him. They are our spirits, you know, the melanated man and woman spirits uh, who we talk to and connect with. And she put them on game, and she told them to take a spiritual bath, and uh, they would go on and teach him how to draw the vive and all type of cool things. And during the spiritual bath, he would literally walk between the crossroads and open the doorway. That doorway is always a doorway, and the doorway is uh, to your own subconscious mind. And he would walk through his own subconscious mind to, to learn cool thing and he will find out what's really going on and he come to find out he was uh what, what was happening here was him he found out his connection between Tandy and himself and they both received the answers for each other so they can so they can sit down and talk about what's going on with each other and which they were going to do all throughout the first season and sec and even second season right so um you know uh and, you know, I ain't gonna spoil too much of it for you. Just give you a, a few rundown here. Uh, you know, first season, pretty much shit go down. Uh, uh, the energy, the dark energy, they put these pipes and valves all over the city. The dark energy and the light energy is exploding. The young energy is exploding all over the city, making people go crazy, turning them into zombies. Why are you getting turned into zombies? Well, that's another aspect of Odoom. They, uh, they got a chapter in here called Sorcery. You know, they got a chapter in here on sorcery. Let me get to it for y'all. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about that real quick. Sorcery. Uh, Vodou is perceived the universe as a magical cosmos in which man is born of magic and all men are potential magicians. Sorcery is considered to be magic utilized for bad intent and manipulation of spiritual forces for personal gain. Those who embrace will do it not sorcery, but do not necessarily practice it. Men are quick to dis disassociate themselves from any connection with it. You know, so, so yeah, zombification. Another aspect, and here goes a, here goes a paper mache of the zombie right here. Uh, you know. Now, another aspect is zombification. Uh, another sorcerer's practice is the creation of zombie. These are people who appear to have died and have been interred. They are then dug up and brought back to life some days later. Necromancy, as it's also called. Once resurrection, their will ceases to be their own, and they submit to the commands of their owner in a stupor of idiocy. It is believed that the sorcerer concocts a poison from different animals and vegetable sources, and administers this to the unfortunate victim. The poison induces a coma that is indistinguishable from death, because the breathing is so light as to be negligible. Then, when the bogus corpse is dug up, the antidote is administered that appears to bring the body back to life. And then you see how deep that is. Let me read it again. A pause it induces a coma that is indistinguishable, indistinguishable from death because the breathing is so light as to be negligible. Then when a bogus corpse is dug up, an antidote is administered that appears to bring the body back to life. When people die in suspicious circumstances in Haiti, the corpse is often shot or strangled to save it from a life of enslavement as a zombie. The fear of enslavement is at the heart of the zombie mythology. During the struggle for independence, the Haitian slaves vowed they would choose death rather than a return to slavery, and the zombie represents their deepest fears. So, uh, so yeah, so yeah, this thing, is, so, so, so yeah, so they represent the deepest fears. Uh, the zombification represents deepest fears. You, you, you a dead conscious motherfucker. 
you with no will, no no nothing. You see what I'm saying? You can see and hear, but you blind, deaf, and dumb for the most part, right? You know, uh, so this is what's going on. So these valves blow up and people start turning into zombies for the most part. You know, and start attacking each other. They would bite and touch each other and scratch each other and turn into zombies. The only people that weren't affected were the divine parent who were, who were destined to stop the events. And so what, they, what happened was they found the factory in which was overloading, uh, the valve factory which was overloading, and they would go on to, you know, stop it. Which is, uh, and, and it will discharge the excess yin yang energy into the atmosphere, which is what this scene here is all about. Hold on. That's what this scene here is all about. So, 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 yeah. So now, let's continue here. Vodun. Vodou. So, it's very powerful. It's very powerful. So, the divine pairing, the 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 this generation of people who would save New Orleans, uh, of the of the dynamic duo who would save New Orleans, they both were marked. Cause usually one is marked for death and the other one lives. Well, this time they both were marked and they both needed to heal it. And this healed the rift between the divine parent and they brought balance to the force. You see what I'm saying? And by extension, the city itself and healed everybody there. And so, thus ends the first season, you know, thus ends the first season of events that will go down. The second season is a lot more subtle, but it gets deeper into Vodun and their, and, um, uh, Tandy and Tyrone's relationships, and this is this is this is uh, a real powerful Vodun storyline. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people uh, pass make their transition. A lot of people uh, the torches pass. A lot of passion of the guard in this show. So now, at the start of the second season, Tyrone is framed by the police as a cop killer and so he has to leave home he becomes home now he's falling but tandy is on the rise her and her mother are getting along again she's staying with her mother things going well there she starts with she starts ballet again starts to dance once more and things go well right so she's she's on up and up why as whereas tyrone has fallen as far as physically but he gets stronger spiritually you see what I'm saying? So, usually when they fall physically, they get stronger spiritually. And when they fall spiritually, or, or, or they kind of chill out spiritually, they rise in physically. It's, it's an interplay between spirituality and physicality. So, this is no different. So, now, he's, he, he's starting to develop his abilities a lot more. And he even goes on to control his ability to teleport. And he's unlocked some 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 even cooler abilities uh, as time goes on. My, my, my boy can actually uh, summon a black hole within himself and absorb bullets and people into the lower dimension. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it gets real. It, it gets real. So um, yeah, what goes on next is they um, the, these events here. There's another. Uh, it's a it's a storyline of the missing girls. The missing girls. A lot of women are, are, are being stolen, and everybody trying to see why these women being stolen like this. And come to find out, uh, the women who are being stolen is uh, the mastermind behind it is a guy by the name of Andre Deshaun, who is uh, the Lord of the Spat. He represents the Spat. Now, uh, this this is a very unique storyline because I feel like um, the Spat. Uh, the way he built them up in the TV show is a demiurge. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so let, let, let's go over this. Let's go over this. Let, let, let's start with Andre Deshaun first. Andre Deshaun uh, is a jazz musician. And on a night where he starts to tap into what he like to call the blue note, the blue note, as uh, how it's des described in the movie, is when. You tap into music so so uh, so powerfully that you actually uh, begin to have an out of body experience, and everybody else have an out of body experience. So he was tapping into the blue note. When he started tapping into the blue note, all of a sudden he started catching migraines. Of course, since he started catching migraines, he couldn't play music uh, 
before uh, no more and he fell into a depression right when he fell into this depression he tried to commit suicide on the night he tried to commit suicide the rig exploded and affected him when he woke back up he had the ability to steal everyone's hope or their light you see what i'm saying it's to steal their light so he opened up a um a mental health facility health care facility where all he had to do was touch you and uh, it all came in the form of music showing you how powerful music is in your show and music has a very powerful heritage in new orleans so all he had to do is touch you and he can get all your records in the form of memories your chain of memories right and he can play those records and absorb your energy absorb your hope from the records you see what i'm saying all he needed was your tune your music you know your, your musical notes and so he did this with hundreds uh, Cause he had a whole record store in his mind, and he would go into his mind, and he would play these records. And when he played these records, it would absorb. He would absorb their energies, uh, their hope, their light, and they would be full of despair and hopelessness. You see what I'm saying? And so, uh, because of him, he uh, he's on the path of becoming his own lower. You see what I'm saying? He's on the path to become his own lower or God. You see what I'm saying? His own God. But. Uh, the way he's doing it, that they portray to you in the TV show, he's doing it without the work put in. He didn't do the internal work to do it. He's using everybody else's power to become this new lore on the block, this new spirit on the block. See what I'm saying? He uses everyone else. He's not using his own personal power. You know, he's not tapping into himself. He's tapping into others and draining them. Vampirism, you see what I'm saying? This spell was all about vampirism, which is why I know he's a demiurge, y'all the bull. That's what y'all the bulls do. Him, his all kind of hosts do what? They vamp you. And so they had, they literally had the girls at this hotel, I think it was called Viking Hotel or something like that. And they was full of despair. They had no hope inside them. And so, uh, when they kidnapped, um, Tandy and she tried to touch one of the girls, she touched many girls and none of them had any hope. You know, none of them had any hope. So, uh, these things go down. Now, another character, Bridget, uh, Bridget, who is a police officer, interesting enough, uh, her, her, her art picks up mainly season two, even though season one was okay for her too, but she was affected by the yin-yang energies and her dark side and her light side split in half. So, um, you know, and her dark side was known as Mayhem and she was just regularly known as Bridget. And... And uh, from this point on, you know, uh, it would be a storyline of her balancing out her dark and light cells. And eventually in the lower dimension, her dark and light cells will re reunite and become whole again. So Tyrone and Tandy are trying to stop this dude from um, um, kidnapping these girls. Meanwhile, they're dealing with their own personal shit, too. Tyrone is trying, still trying to clear his name. Uh, we find Connors in the lower dimension because uh, Tyrone absorbed his ass. And from that point on, you know, uh, they go in and get his ass and, and he turns himself in. <laughs> but the mama end up killing his dumb ass because he, he go takes it to his father first. His father wanted to kill him and almost killed him, but he was stopped because he had people in the house to stop him. But the mother was left there by herself with this nigga and she shot this motherfucker. But uh, he eventually get his name clear, and they eventually take down uh, the motherfuckers who uh, framed him. You know, who framed him, which is cool. It's cool. You know, uh, but the main storyline is about the missing girls. What does anytime you see anybody missing in TV shows, those represent the uh, fr those are soul fragments. You see what I'm saying? They represent fragmentation. Uh, people, when people are missing, that means an aspect of, of the puzzle is missing. So, all these girls that's missing were fragments of the whole. You know, that's what Demiurge is all, Demiurge is all about, fragmenting everyone, breaking them apart from the inside out. You know, shattering them from the inside out. And he specializes in stealing a light in this TV show. But we know that the Demiurge feeds off both darkness and light. It, they, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. They feed off your dark and life emotions. Their favorite emotion to feed off of is fear. But they'll feed off any emotion. In this case, this particular aspect of the demon urge specializes in feeding off light. See what I'm saying? Your positive energy, your glow. You know, uh, in the great words of Dick Howard in the movie Doctor, S Doctor Sleep, he clearly states that some motherfuckers, um, 
some motherfuckers who dark and deadly eat your shine, eat your glow, eat your light. You know, which they call hope in the movie. They eat your light. They don't. They don't. They don't run from the light. They eat. They feed off the light. Well, despair is the demiurge aspect of these beings who actually have this ability, and they show you very well how they feed off light. Cause we know they feed off darkness. We know that the dark intentions of your heart. Most people know that it's plethora information, but what's not talked about a lot is them their ability to feed off your light. You see what I'm saying? Your shine, your glow. So this is why you have to be balanced. You need both dark and light sides of the force inside of you to conquer this shit. That's why the only thing that blocks them is balance, you know, androgyny. The uh, fusion of both your your uh, your yin and yang forces inside of you. When uh, when that happens, you no longer emit just light anymore. You 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 emit pure neutral energy, or what they call biotransparency what's called biotransparency like your aura doesn't look it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't uh, emit light but um it emits pure natural or super slash supernatural force from uh, uh, from uh within you you know so yeah so 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 bio incandescence which is pure white light or visible light on the light spectrum is actually um the highest level of light you will achieve, also known as Luciferian light in mythologies. Uh, Lucifer is known as what? The brightest star in the sky. Why is he the brightest star in the sky? Or the brightest soul in the sky? Because the white light is the brightest light there is. You see what I'm saying? That's why young is the color white. And light and white represents what? Purification, purity. It represents a conglomeration of all color radiation. So it is literally the conglomerate of all colors. So this visible light, uh, is this visible light, this inc this incandescence, your ability to bio incandesce is the highest form of light you will achieve. Uh, first the gold light, which is soul light, then from the uh, gold light, like they showed you in Dragon Ball Z, from Super Saiyan to Ultra Instinct, you become, uh, you begin, you, you go from, bi uh, bioillumination is one level, the highest level of bioillumination is bioincandescence, where you literally emit pure white light. If y'all know where incandescence comes from, it comes from the, inc um, the, um, the Latin incandescere, which means pure white light, or just white light. So this visible light that 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 you have, the white light sables and everything is incandescence. That's what it's called. Cosmic or quantum incandescence, however you like to see it. What's happening here is you you seeing um Tandy represent or emit this incandescence. So that's the highest level of pure light there is. It's the twenty seventh ray of light. She's uh she's emitting the twenty seventh ray of light. The 27 ray of light is a diamond white light, the purest and brightest light in existence, or Luciferian light. You see what I'm saying? So, 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 on a scientific level, it's called incandescence, you know. If you want to know the scientific aspect to balance out the mythological uh, aspect as well, it's called incandescence. So, and you, and, and for you personally, us personally, it's bio incandescence, you know. So, so we can emit this, uh, and they tell you what is incandescence. It's your ability to emit, emit, emit this bright white light by generating heat, which is your kundalini energy. You see what I'm saying? Your kundalini energy. So, 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 yes, yes. So, 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 so they tell you that it's only seven uh, hours, but it's 27 hours, 27 major hours. And the highest and brightest hour you will emit is the white light, which is Luciferian light or incandescence. So, yeah, bio incandescence. After you master your white light and you balance it out with your dark melanin, then uh, the light actually becomes transparent. You see what I'm saying? Biotransparency. That's when you become an androgynous entity. You see what I'm saying? You become an androgynous entity. And when you become an androgynous, or uh, the Wu Ji state, as it's also called in Asia, when you become an, or in Yoho in Japan, uh, uh, so, 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 yeah, when, when you achieve this state, then your energy no longer emits white or black. It's pure, it's clear. You see, transparency means, biotransparency means that the, the frequency is clear now. So they can't read your light anymore. You see what I'm saying? Yo, yo, your energy signature, signature can't be read because it's transparent. How can you read something that's transparent now? You know, see, you know, who, who that's colorless. It's no longer, you no longer emit color anymore. You, you, you mastered the concept of color and have moved beyond it and transitioned into the pure, 
totality of the force energy. You see what I'm saying? So you're emitting pure raw life force energy at this point. That's what the state of androgyny is. You know, we call it androgyny in mythology or the Wuji state in mythology, but scientifically it's biotransparency. Your your ability to emit pure force energy from your aura. You see what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it doesn't have a color. The, it, the, most people may see a pinch of gray. A pinch of gray, but gray just represents what? Neutrality. Right? It, it's the only color that you will see emitted from this 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 energy. And that <clears throat> and, it, and you only see color when it's so fucking bright. I mean, yeah, when when it when when the key becomes so dense that it materializes, it may have a trans a gray transparency to it. So yeah, you may see that. But most of the time, most of the time it's transparent. Most people why, like why we can't see the force. It ain't that you can't see the force. It's just you have to train your eyes to look into a negative space and see the transparency of the force. It look like you 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 will see a wave of energy and then and you will see little bubbles. Those are the midichlorians, you know, or, or bosons and gluons. You know, the 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 uh, elemental particles that carry the wheel of the force, the intelligence of the force, as it flows in through and all. Uh, as it flows in through and around all different things, right? So, yeah. So, that's what this is about. So, this is a story about balance. This is a story about balance, androgyny, and finding a way. You know, finding a way. So, they go, they go on to fight this dude. This dude actually becomes a guy or a lower. He actually transcends this plane and becomes a lower himself. And uh, as a lower, you know, he had his own vivay. Since he had his own, since he was born with his own, since uh, after the experience, he got his own vivay. All he had to do was play the musical note. He had to just draw it out and play the musical note. And when somebody tried to kill him, he 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 he, uh, he dropped the body and became a pure lore. You know, he dropped the body and became a pure lore. And from this point on, he was, he was literally able to play his trumpet and um uh, and and draw people's souls into his realm, where they where he would feed off their life force in their realm. See what I'm saying? They, they literally would disappear from the physical and transition from um, this realm. How they found out about this? Uh, sister girl, Eva Lita, becomes, um, becomes her, mo her auntie dies and the, 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 the torch is passed to her and she, uh, she becomes a mamba. A mamba, the divine marriage. If y'all never heard of the divine marriage. Now, divine marriage is real interesting. Uh, you can mar you can get married to a particular lure. Let's see here. Let's see, can I find it? And, and, and for a woman, it's called, you become a mamba. Mystical marriage. An initiate may undertake a mystical marriage with a spirit in order to deepen and strengthen the relationship. Principally, but not invariably, union takes place between the celebrant and his or her dominant spirit. Sometimes another spirit, uh, your dominant spirit is all of us is born aligned with a particular lore, if you didn't know that. Like, say, for example, my lore would be Shango, you know, the storm god, or the storm lore, you see what I'm saying? Now, that was my, that was my dominant spirit, you know, or uh, dominant, natural, uh, dominant force inside of me. Sometimes another spirit can demand betrothal through the dreams of the future bride or groom. The spirits most likely to undertake matrimony with mortals are Ezele Frida, Ezele Danto, Dambala, Ogu, and Agwe, but all of them can take brides or and 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 uh and, and husbands, you know. So let's let's get into the, the marriage ceremony. Vows are taken and rings are exchanged as in an earthly marriage. And the mortal partner promised to put one night per week aside as a devotion to the divine consort. On this night, the initiates must sleep alone, often in a specially prepared single bed, and wait for their spiritual reverie with their sacred husband or wife. Uh, spiritual sex, for the most part, or astral sex, or, or lower, or, or, or in this case, the lower dimensional version, uh, lower version of uh, the spiritual plane, you know. If they take part in sexual intercourse with a mortal on this night, they risk inflaming the fear of their spirit partner. <laughs> so, so on one night out of the week, you can't have sex with mort uh, with mortals. You are um, you only have sex with the Lord who you've married to. Okay, makes sense. That's actually pretty reasonable, actually. The marriage cer ceremony can be expensive, as the celebrant must provide the wedding trosu, trosu, and rings and the cakes and drinks for the reception. 
on a prescribed day, an altar is set up in the courtyard of the temple and laden with cakes, candles, and holy water. The officiating priest is called the Prit. Uh, the Pret Savon, a bush priest, and begins the ceremony by baptizing by, by, by baptizing the wind gown and drawing the vavay of the participating spirit on the floor of the temple. Makes sense. Which is what she had to do. She had to tap. Uh, now her, her auntie was married, a mamba, who was uh, the, 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 uh, a mamba is the bride, um, yeah, the bride of a particular lord, right? So her, uh, her her auntie's particular lord that she was married to was um, Papa Leba. Well, she got married to Baron something. See what I'm saying? So she became she became a deaf goddess or a deaf lord in, on the physical, you know. So 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 let's see here. Bush priest began the ceremony by bata bataz uh, by baptizing the wind gown and drawing the vavay of the participating spirit on the floor of the temple. The spirit arrives at the ceremony through possession. Sometimes the mortal bride or groom is ridden by the divine spouse. Or sometimes a third party acts as a prophet with the betrothed and receives the honor spirit. Two godparents flank the mortal bride or groom and act as witnesses to the sacred wedlock. The prayer savant asks the spirits if he or she will take the mortal as husband or wife and promise to protect them. The priest then asks the mortal if they take the spirit as their husband or wife, promising to be faithful for one night per week. The godfather places two rings on the finger of the mortal spouse as the priest reads out of divine marriage sacraments. The witnesses sign a certificate and the mortal spouse eats the special foods of his or her spiritual husband or wife. For example, this can be white eggs and flour for dambala or sweet cakes and syrup for Azalea Frida. The conjugal uh, celebrations continue with singing and dance, and a wedding, wedding cake is then shared among the congregation. So, yeah. So, yeah. Motherfuckers be like, you can't marry no deity. You just, re you just heard me read about it, didn't you? They actually have a name for it. Mamba. Uh, I know it's for the ladies. Uh, I don't know what they call the men when they become brides of a particular lower. I know it's Mamba for the women, though. Mamba, M-A-M-B-A. Let me see. Let me see can I find it for y'all real quick. Let me see here. Come on, man. I don't see nothing for this. Well, it's not coming up on Google. <laughs> you know. But in the TV show, they call them Mamba. M-A-M-B-A. -A, uh, spiritual Bride. I don't know what the, um, the, the masculine name or spiritual grooms for the ladies. But uh, for women, it's Mamba. But yes, you can marry. You can get married to a particular deity to strengthen your connection with the forces of that deity. You know, and just because you, like they stated, just because you have uh, naturally, say for example, I'm naturally aligned, my natural force was not aligned with Shango, don't mean uh, I can't go marry Oshun or, 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 or Oya or somebody. You see what I'm saying? 
Uh, no, it don't work like that. You can marry uh, any any uh, uh, Lord slash Orisha you wish to marry uh, as long as you adhere to the precepts of that marriage for the rest of your life. Marriage or union means lifelong journey, by the way. They don't tell y'all what marriage means. It means to unify for life. You know, to unify for life or this life, at least. You know, on into the afterlife, you know. Yeah, you know, so. So, yeah. So, yeah, she becomes uh, a mama for for Baron Sunday, spiritual wife of uh, Baron Sunday, uh, which actually she goes on to save. Uh, what's, what, what could her name? Uh, Tyrone. And she goes on to give readings and everything, letting them know what's really going on. She even helped them uh, during the end as she kept the uh, portal open to the Lord Dimension by using a flame. So so she she played a big part, a big role in this show as a uh, Vodun priestess. She was a bad motherfucker. So yeah, she had the Death Lord watching her back. And, uh, you know, Bridget slash May, uh, Mayhem, they, they played a big role as well in the second season. Uh, she was kicking them. She was kicking them. Fucking. Uh, after a while, uh, when they showed you when you interfere with the Lord's business, they can send uh, uh, spiritual assassins after you. You see what I'm saying? They sent spiritual assassins after um, Evelita um, in this show, and uh, when they spent sent spiritual assassins after her. It was Bridget slash Mayhem who protected her, you know. So yeah, so it's a powerful show. It's a powerful show, and they go on to defeat him, you know, and by showing him, uh, by going to his mind and and distorting his own music, you know. And so since how he distorted his own music, they 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 begin to free everybody, cause um as they conquer their own fields, and um once they once once Ty and Tend to conquer their own fears, they were able to, you know, to to fight this nigga and go and they entered his mind and they distorted his music, his tone, and they, and he was forced to release everybody because he lost control of his own mind. So yeah, real demon urgent, real y'all the boy then y'all blind guy just 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 took 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 never gave anything. Even even the oracle was like, nigga, how long? You just got a little bit of power and and, and nigga, you just fucking people up left and right. You you ain't think to do something good with this energy, but he couldn't do nothing good. All he could do was suck up the hopes of our people and leave them in despair. Lead them as mental and emotional and spiritual empty husk for the most part until they they reignite that light inside of them, of course, like Tanda had to do, and some of the girls at the hotel, you know. So 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 real symbolic. The hotel represents your own prison, also represents the y'all the boy and ego. You see what I'm saying? The demon urgent ego, you know. It, they they tell you is the ego is <clears throat> literally it's called the ego because it means it to edge God out. Well, the demon urge the ego has to be reconfigured to work with the psyche, and after a while it becomes one with the psyche, and so you you no longer have an ego in that sense. Uh, your ego works with the rest of you, and uh, uh, is it becomes it becomes a psycho ego. You see what I'm saying? Or, 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 or a psycho ego. And with the psycho ego, you you it works with your the rest of you to get shit done down here. Both spiritually and physically. And it no longer uh fights against your spiritual selves, you know, your 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 your, your internal selves. Anymore it works with your internal selves to get shit done. So yeah. They gonna defeat this motherfucker. I'm I'm skipping a few things in the show, but you know, uh I want y'all to go see it for yourselves, and you go check it out. I just want to uh, touch on the main points of the show, you know, main points of the show, and uh, the powerful voodoo, voodoo, voodoo uh, principles in them, you know, principles in them. So y'all go check it out, you know, it's pretty much wraps it up. Pretty much wraps it up there. So any questions, any questions, I, I ended there. So yeah, this was a listening balance.
stability. What does balance mean? The definition of balance mean or equal weight of distribution, which produces stability uh, equally and equilibrium. That's what the definition of balance really is. So any questions? Well, yeah, if y'all want the book, once again, it's called Voodoo, The Book of Voodoo, Charms and Rituals to Empower Your Life by Leah Gordon, L-E-A-H Gordon. Stuff. Do I know a good way to tap into the tile or melanin absolute meditation? Yes, self hypnosis tapes. You need something to distract your conscious mind sometime so that you can go full, deal fully into your subconscious and unconscious realms. So, yeah, listen to some self hypnosis tapes. You want to get some self hypnosis tapes? Uh, you can go to Steve G. Jones page and sell them. Uh, wait till a holiday around the holiday season, which uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. So, yeah, and uh, Valentine's Day, which is interesting, we just got you talking about spiritual marriage, love, and all that. Uh, spiritual love is nothing but, you know, feeling, empathy, you know, uh, you know, being able to feel the world around you, being able to feel yourself, first and foremost, and love is basically the universe's ability to feel itself. The creator's ability to feel itself. That's what love really is. Love's dark side is hate, which is the ability to repel the bullshit away from itself. So, yeah. So that's what love and uh, hate really is. Hate is repulsion, love is attraction. So yeah, if you want to do it, look at it as a, uh, as a scientific principle. That's why love is the law of attraction, and hate is the law of repulsion. So yes, yeah, those are both laws, by the way. Hate repels or pushes shit away, shit you don't want in your reality. That's actually a form of hate, believe it or not. Uh, you kick out shit you don't want in your reality. There's nothing wrong with hate, uh, like people have been taught. Um, hate is used to get rid of shit you don't need. Love is used to attract what you want to your reality, be it abundance, prosperity, uh, companions, you know, uh, that is a thing that, that love is not just about one paradigm or relationships. Love is about attracting whatever you need and want in your reality to help, uh, bolster your life in the ways you need it. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, love is you attracting that house. You attracting that car. You attracting a coat text to help build up your wisdom. Love is, you know, that's what that's what attraction really is. Uh, also companions, you know, you you can attract friends, family, uh, various other things. You see what I'm saying? That you need to to be a stable functioning being down here. That's what love really is. Hate is everything you don't need. You see what I'm saying? You, you get rid of all the bullshit. You burn it away. You know, get rid of those old cars and clothes and everything. That's hate. That's actually the principle of repulsion. So, so, so that's represented by the emotion of hate. So don't let them get it twisted. Love and hate are one, are yin and yang. You see what I'm saying? They, they, they two sides of the same coin. When your love and hate is in balance, then you become neutral. You see what I'm saying? You become neutral uh, uh, in your heart chakra. So when you become neutral in your heart chakra, then all energy, all the life, you attract the life force now. Because uh, the life force is neutral, and when you attract that life force, you it can flow. You can flow. Uh, it now flows through in through and around you as a uh, as a conscious sentience that you uh, can call on, a, a powerful energy that you can call on. See what I'm saying? When you need it the most, or just the basket. Some people just use the force recreationally to just enjoy itself. You can use the force however the fuck you want to use the force, because uh, you you train to use it. So use it in as many ways as possible. Whether it be recreation, recreationally, for a purpose, um, you know, um, you know, whatever, you know, that that's usually the 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 uh, you know, the the extremities either recreationally or for a purpose, you know, so 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 you use it however fuck you want to use it. It's your force, you know. Who t who 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 are they to tell you how to use your force and what to use your force for? So don't let these niggas tell you how to use your energy. Um, you know, morality and all that shit. You you gotta throw that away. You use your force however you feel you need to use it. 
you know, uh, so yeah, shit, yeah, on, on another level, cause, yeah, he, he, he sucked everybody to hope up, <laughs> but then again, he didn't even need to do that, uh, the only thing he needed to do was fucking write out his sigil, complete his fucking vivay, and goddamn, uh, play it, uh, play, 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 play the tunes to his vivay, and he would have seen it, that's all he ever had to do, he didn't even need to feed off people's energy, you see what I'm saying? He just had to tap into himself and to become his own lord. The problem was he had got so accustomed to feeding on people's energy that he never thought that uh uh to, he never thought to tap into his own power till later on in the show. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah, so, yeah. there you go, Alexis, what you love, you attract more of. Any questions, any questions. So yeah, just wanted to let y'all know where it was. Since we're dealing with that Valentine's energy, it's right around the corner, ain't it? What is it, the 8th, 9th? Yeah, 9th, and you never a few days away. So, yeah. So, that's what love really is. Attraction of all things that you want and need. Um, and hate is repulsion of all things you don't want and need. You see what I'm saying? Don't want and need. So, yeah. So, any questions before I get up out of here? Savage Rocky, can holocrons be used as portals? Holocrons are usually libraries of information uh, for you to tap in. You are your own portal. You ain't got to worry about that. You just got to learn how to open up a portal in your own mind. And, you know, you can train to do that in your imagination. Just, just go, you know, just, just create a, uh, just imagine, you, you can just imagine your den. You know, or your living room or your favorite room and practice opening portals in their room and closing portals. Of course, you know, just don't practice opening them, also practice closing them as well, you know. Because if their portals stay open, anything can come through it. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, you, you, you're not the only one who can walk through a portal. Other motherfuckers can walk through a portal as well. And they will take the opportunity to do it. So, yeah, practice opening and closing portals. So, yeah. What's up, Nico? But, if y'all don't have any more questions, let me get on up out of here. I'm Marvin Jones. Y'all put the word out with your friends. Let them know what's going on. Uh, if you want the sacred 100 needed names, hit me up for, for the $20. Uh, I also throw in the 50 names of Marduk, so hit me up for that. And, um, uh, if you want to check out my other code lectures, you can hit me up at the Mel Night Order on YouTube. And if you just want to donate, support, you can cash out me at MTJ Network. Third son, what's the best way to recover the pieces of your soul that may have been lost? You can do a soul uh, retrieval ritual. You know, soul retrieval ritual. Uh, you can look at that up online. I think they still got spells for it up online, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, look at their spell and then write your own spell to retrieve all the fragments of your soul back to you. Summon them all back to you. So yeah, so so I had them. I had them in a few texts, but shit, I don't remember which ones is which, yeah, or which books they in. But yeah, yeah, just do your soul retrieval ritual, third son. Uh, but I am pretty much about. Jawana, what are repeat numbers? Forty-four and twenty-two. They are master numbers. You can look them up, uh, or angel numbers, whichever one you prefer. Just type in angel number 44 on Google, 4422, and they'll pretty much tell you they mean it. So, yeah. But, all right, y'all. Self, am I a part of anyone's Council of 13? Not that I know of. <laughs> Not that I know of. Uh, pretty much pretty much a long warrior most of the time. I work with different councils a lot of time, but pretty much do my own thing. You know, walk my own path. So, yeah. But all right, y'all, I'm out of here. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.